this is kitchen time in the RV. This has been a little bit of a learning curve just because I'm used to having food storage. I'm also used to having abundant power, wood burning stove or electric, and now I'm using propane. I grew up with propane because I grew up off grid with solar panels and propane and, and wood stoves and that kind of thing. But I've never done it in this small of a space where the amount of fuel was a little bit limited. So this should be really interesting to make dinner in an RV. Okay guys, it's going to be interesting doing this right now because we have the freeway right next door. But I will do my best. So I brought a pressure cooker. Not a pressure canner, although you could can in it. The difference between a pressure cooker and a pressure canner is that with the canner you have a weight that tells you uh, what your pressure is, how high your pressure is, if you've reached pressure according to like your altitude. And different altitudes need different pressure in order for your food to be safe. So. What I'm doing is peeling potatoes that I'm going to then pressure cook. And then as soon as they are done pressure cooking, which will only take a few minutes, and you can look up pressure cooking times for different foods online. Once I've done that, I'm gonna take the carcass of a chicken, a rotisserie chicken that we got from the grocery store and I'm gonna cook it to make gravy and that should be pretty good okay so I have my potatoes peeled and now I'm going to cut them up into thirds now the trick with pressure cooking is that you're steaming your pressure cooking you're not just cooking them so it's a lot faster but some of the things you need to remember for safety is that it's pressurized. You have a seal here in the lid and you don't want it to heat above the safe level. Um, there's a certain amount of pressure that it should have to do its job, but you don't want it to go above that for, for safety reasons. But it takes much less time to pressure cook something than it does just to cook it. The temperatures get a lot higher. So you don't need to cover the food that's in the pressure cooker. You just need a certain amount of water in it. You don't want to fill it above the safety line because there has to be head space, air space for that steam to come out and for that steam to build up so that you have that pressurized system. So this is my pressure cooker. It looks a little worse for wear for having been in the cupboard for a bit, but it's a Fagor. Rapid Express, and you can see the safety markings on it. Okay, this will lock the lid onto the pan if I can get it to go up. Doesn't want to go up. Um, and this is open. This will allow it to steam, and this is where it's locked into pressurizing. And then you have the, the seal that allows it to clamp down real good. So I have my potatoes in there. I'm going to twist it, make sure it's on straight, I'm going to twist it, and then I'm going to lock it in place, okay? So this is now up and locked in place, and this will pop up with the pressure. This is our little stove. We have been doing a lot of tea, and this is what our kitchen setup is. Okay, so now I'm going to get out my chicken and I'm going to start to open it up a little bit so that it's ready. I did bring a sharpening stone. That's really important. You want your knives to be good and sharp. So I'm just going to tidy up. It's really important that you keep things tidy in the RV because there's very little space. I do worry a little bit about water quality. And so that is also one of the reasons why I like to do teas is because I can boil the water um, just because this RV that we're in was very old it's a 1978 model 
be careful about the amount of soap you use and stuff because that means you'll have to use a lot of water to get it get the soap off so you don't get sick. Usually we don't run the water. We use a lot of wet wipes. And I do have a tendency to tell everybody to get the heck out of my space when I'm cooking in here. It is very difficult to cook in this kitchen if there's anybody else in the RV. They have a tendency just to, to really get under your feet. In a small space, clutter starts to feel very oppressive. So I have my rotisserie chicken, but I didn't bring another pan. I wanted to wait and see just how many we needed. And so now I've kind of, you know, made a little bit of a, of a snafu because it would have been nice if I could have cooked both at the same time. Okay, so my pressure has just come up. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. See that yellow thing that's popped up? That means it's pressurized and the lid is locked on by being in the forward position. So, I turned the heat down a little bit so that it will maintain pressure, but not scream. And I'm just gonna let it go for a bit. So that's the sound that you don't want. That's too much pressure. You shouldn't be hearing it. You should just be seeing the little yellow knob. So I hit Hey babe. Uh, Where do I light the oven? What? Where do I light the oven? The pilot light is up underneath. Careful, it's on. Yes. So you have to turn it to pilot on. Okay. Or, yeah, so there's off and pilot off. So you turn it to off. Okay, it's it. It's off, so the pilot light will be on, sparky. So, the little yellow, the little yellow thing went down, so no steam came out, so I can open it without it blowing up now. See, I twisted that. So what it's coming down to is I wish that I had two pots, just two and just the one bowl. It will help thicken things because it's a starch. I'm going to put in a little bit of onion flake, poultry seasoning, and when you use arrowroot, you don't want to let it boil. through and cut these up a bit. The potato masher definitely would have come in handy. 